okay uh, hello and welcome back i hope you have seen my uh, videos on uh, theory of demand and uh, theory of supply so today we are going to start with another topic that is theory of consumer behavior so let us see what is there in this uh, chapter so as you can see here the first slide the, uh, it is written the title of the slide is objective of the study and the first point run like this the objective of this chapter is to find out the that state of the consumer at which he maximizes his utility in other word to find out equilibrium of the consumer so this chapter completely deals with the behavior of the consumer in an economy and as we know that any consumer who purchase any type of goods or commodity they buy that goods or commodity in order to maximize his level of satisfaction or if i say in a much better way then uh, i may uh, i may say like this that a consumer when go to the market he want to buy that much quantity of the commodity so that his satisfaction level get maximized so you as a consumer i as a consumer when we go to the market we always try to buy those good and we want to buy that much quantity of those good that is going to maximize my level of satisfaction and here in economics satisfaction is measured or satisfaction is termed as utility so we use the word utility uh, when we are talking uh, when we are talking about uh, satisfaction here yes so uh, this is what actually the concept of uh, utility here uh, and uh, this entire chapter can be understand from two approaches that is the, there were two set of economists who have uh, tried in their way to explain this chapter the first set of economists explained it using a concept called cardinal approach their approach is called cardinal and the other set of economists their uh, approach is known as ordinal approach which is also known as indifference curve approach and cardinal approach is also known as marginal utility approach so today in this video we are going to study about the cardinal approach which is also known as marginal utility approach so let us see what what are the things that we are going to see here so as you can see here that is your uh, second slide right so the second in the second slide we are going to first deal with some important concept and then we will move further into this topic to understand the cardinal approach the first important concept here is about utility so it is written the definition run like this utility refers to want satisfying power of a commodity in other word it is the ability or capacity of a commodity to satisfy the human want so as you know as i was telling uh, in the previous slide also that as a consumer when we go to buy the commodity and we purchase that commodity that commodity give us some sense of satisfaction so we buy those commodity for our, our well being that is going to fulfill our desire and at the same time that give us some level of or some sense of satisfaction so utility is that satisfaction which the commodity provide us so you can see one example i have taken where i'm uh, the example is like this that bread has the power to satisfy the desire for hungerness so when we are hungry when we are hungry we take uh, food and that food give us a sense of satisfaction so our hung desire for hungerness is satisfied and at the same time i we get some satisfaction by eating the food similarly when we are in a desire for entertainment so we can uh, switch on our television we can see movies we can see tv serials so that is again going to fulfill our desire for entertainment and at the same time provide us with some sense of satisfaction so this sense of satisfaction is nothing but in economics we term it as utility so that is what actually the concept of utility is so each and every commodity has uh some utility for us or i may say like this that each and every commodity has a sense of satisfaction for us similarly we have a second important concept here as you can see that is called total utility and the definition run like this that it refers to the total satisfaction derived by the consumer from the consumption of a specific quantity of a commodity so what is the concept of total utility it's nothing but the total utility concept is like this that uh, let us say let us imagine that uh, i have consumed the chocolate so the first chocolate that i got 
I got some satisfaction from it. Similarly, the second set chocolate that I'm going to have from that also, I'll get some uh, satisfaction. So if I, uh, if I add my level of satisfaction, if I add the satisfaction that I got uh, from the first chocolate and the satisfaction that I'm getting from the second chocolate, then the sum total of this is nothing but is actually a concept of total utility. You may be uh, wondering that how to measure satisfaction because there is no way or uh, nothing there is no concept of measuring the satisfaction so how much satisfaction i am getting or how much satisfaction you are getting how to measure it yes of course i know that you are thinking about this uh, the point is uh, some economist economist like pigu there was a, a very famous economist that is uh, pigu he tried to measure uh, satisfaction uh, in terms of util right so the unit that is being suggested to measure the satisfaction is called utils. Just like uh, uh, we measure weight, we measure weight in terms of what? In kg. We measure uh, distance in terms of meter. So in the similar manner, Pigu suggested that utility or the satisfaction can also be measured in terms of utils. I'll let you know that uh, what is this util and how, how what is the logic behind uh, measuring the utility. I'll just let you know in some more slides. But for time being, I just suggest you to understand that utility can be measured in terms of utils. Okay. So I hope uh, you have understood this. Uh, I'll give you a, I'll give one small example again. So as I was telling from the first chocolate, I was getting some uh, satisfaction. So let is let it be uh, 10 utils. And from the second chocolate, I, I am getting uh, uh, that is I'm getting a satisfaction or the utility of uh, nine utils. So therefore, the total satisfaction that I'm getting from the consumption of these two chocolate is 10 plus nine, that is equals to 19 utils. So this is what the concept of total utility is right so we'll go for the third important concept here as you can see here that is marginal utility so it refers to the additional utility derived from the consumption of the additional unit of a commodity so this is the definition of marginal utility and this is the formula for calculating the marginal utility as you can see here the formula is like this we read like this that marginal utility of nth commodity is equal to total utility of nth commodity minus total utility of n minus 1 commodity what do i mean so i'll give you a small example so that i can make you understand the concept of marginal utility so please listen properly uh, let us come to the previous example that we were dealing with so as i was telling from the first chocolate i was getting a utility of 10 utils from the second chocolate, I got the utility of nine utils. And from the third chocolate, let us say, we are getting the utility of uh, five utils. So the point is, so if you look here, uh, if I want to find out the total utility that I, I have got from the consumption of these three chocolate is 10 plus nine plus five. So 10 plus nine plus five is how much? That is 24 utils. So therefore the total satisfaction or the total utility that I'm getting from the consumption of uh, these three chocolate is 24 utils. If I'm interested to find out that what is the marginal utility that I got from the second chocolate, as you can see the definition, it is told additional utility. That is additional what, how, how much I'm getting. And as you can see the formula. So if I'm interested to find out the marginal utility from the second, so therefore the value of n here is 2 so mu2 is nothing but equals to tu2 that is the total utility i got from the second chocolate so what is my total utility that i got from the second chocolate 10 and 9 so what is the total 19 so i got 19 and minus tu n minus 1 so as i told the value of n is what 2 so 2 minus 1 is 1 so the total utility that i got from the first chocolate that is n minus 1 so therefore what i'm getting that is the first chocolate i got the total utility as 10 so 19 minus 10 i'm going to get as 9 so therefore the marginal utility that i'm getting from the second chocolate is uh, 9 Similarly, if I'm interested to find out the marginal utility that I'm getting from the consumption of third chocolate. So here the value of n will be 3. So mu3 is equal to tu3 minus tu2 uh, because 3 minus 1 is 2. So the total utility that I'm getting from the third chocolate is how much? 10 plus 9 plus uh, 5 that is equals to 24 and the total utility that I got from the second chocolate so that is total utility was 10 plus 9 19 so 24 minus 19 I'm going to get uh, get it as 5 
so that is how we uh, are talking about the concept of marginal utility so hope you have understood for time being that uh, the three these three concept utility total utility and marginal utility right so moving on further as you can see here we are going to discuss more about utility because uh, the entire uh, approach the entire cardinal approach is based on the concept of utility so we can understand the concept in a better way if we know lot of things about uh, utility its features its characteristics uh, the concept right so as you can see here when we are talking about satisfaction you know satisfaction it's is termed as utility uh, in economics so let us see that what are the features of utility here so the first point tell that utility is a subjective concept the word subjective here implies that utility vary from person to person for the same uh, quantity of good or for the same good so it may happen that uh, for the same commodity one person get different satisfaction and the second person get different satisfaction and this is what we see in the real life also so it may be like this that from the cup of tea uh, i may get a different level of satisfaction and for that same cup of tea you will get a different level of satisfaction so our satisfaction level may not be same for the same commodity or for the same good so that is what we see for the first uh, feature the feature of utility as you can see here the picture say suppose th these there are four person and for the that cup of tea the person he is very happy and so the word excellent is written for him uh, for her uh, it may not be she is getting that uh, that much level of satisfaction which the first person is getting and so she is of the opinion good uh, the third person is of the opinion uh, nice and the fourth is like so for the same cup of tea these four person are getting different level of satisfaction so this is the first important feature or the characteristics of utility so it become very difficult to measure uh, satisfaction because it vary from person to person right so that is the reason that why i have pointed out the second feature as you can see here that second feature tell that utility is not measurable of course so uh, if you also look then satisfaction cannot be measured so how much satisfaction i am getting how can i measure it? measure this this is a completely a big task for us so economists like alfred marshall and pigou tried to find out the method or the technique by which we can measure the level of satisfaction and according to them they told that utility can be measured in terms of money that the consumer is ready to pay for the commodity this is one of the uh, method that they suggested right so here you can see here according to the feature i have written that utility is not measurable but economists like alfred marshall and pigou tried to measure it and they were of the opinion that utility can be measured in terms of the money that a consumer is ready to pay for a for a good uh, in the previous slide i told that i'll let you know that how to measure the uh, level of satisfaction and of course here i'm trying uh, to explain this so uh, they are telling that the money that i am ready to pay so the for example let us take the example like this that uh, say suppose for one cup of tea i am ready ready to pay 10 rupees so that 10 rupees is nothing but that is the level of satisfaction for me for the cup of tea so if i am left free and if i am left uh, free to decide that how much money i am ready to pay for the commodity then that is a utility that we are getting from the cup of tea so for the first cup of tea my utility is 10 utils so I'm, i'll not use the unit rupees i'm going to use the unit utils for the second cup of tea say suppose i'm re uh, i am uh, ready to pay 5 rupees only so from the second for the second cup of tea my utility is 5 utils so this is what one idea that is suggested by alfred marshall and pigou to uh, show that how we can measure utility and we are going to use this concept uh, in further topics right so this is what uh, the third important uh, feature that we see with respect to utility is utility is a relative concept what do i mean by saying relative concept because it uh, it's it is not that utility vary from person to person but for the same person the utility of the same commodity uh, may also vary right again i am repeating what i am trying to say i am saying that utility does not vary from person to person only but utility may also vary for the same person for depending upon its intensity of desire i've used the word here intensity of desire that means how much he is in a need of that commodity that also shows that utility uh, vary from uh, vary uh, with the same person itself 
So as you can see one example, I've taken the example like this, that greater the need, the greater is the utility. So the uh, how much I'm in need of it. So if I'm in a very urgently, if I need that commodity, so I will be ready to pay as much as I can. So therefore my utility from that commodity will be very high. And suppose if I'm not in an urgent need, I can postpone it. So the satisfaction that I'm getting from that same commodity is now different. So depending upon time. So I may say like this, that utility vary from time to time utility vary from person to person and that is the reason why we are calling it as a subjective concept and it's not uh, we can say that utility also vary from time to time and also vary from places places to place let me give you some example to make you understand why we are saying that utility is a relative concept so if we are talking about time to time then i may say like this that uh, uh, say suppose or let us first take that example of place to place so uh, in places where there is a uh, very hard, high temperature or the climatic condition is very high there we find that there is a no need or the people does not get uh, or people get very less satisfaction does not receive any satisfaction by purchasing woolen clothes yes or no but if we are talking about those places where the temperature is very low right there the importance of that cloth that is the same woolen cloth is very high so the people want to buy it because that will provide them a sense of satisfaction so what we see for the woolen cloth the woolen cloth uh, is uh, the woolen cloth give very less satisfaction to the people living in the uh, high temperature zone whereas the woolen cloth uh, provide us a high level of satisfaction for the people living in the uh, that is living living in the tem uh, low temperature area so that shows that uh, that woolen cloth has a, a different level of satisfaction depending upon the place to place similarly time to time can also be given some examples like that only that uh, utility also vary from time to time so that is say suppose for example if i give you one example uh, during the summer time uh, the satisfaction that we may get from eating an ice cream it will be different uh, from the satisfaction that we get from eating an ice cream in the winter season so that shows that yes utility vary from time to time so in summer when uh, we will be ready to pay uh, even 20 25 or 30 rupees or even 50 rupees for the ice cream but uh, in winter uh, because in winter there is no urgent need for us to have an ice cream so we may not be ready to pay that 50 rupees which we are ready to pay during the summer time so that shows that utility also vary from time to time in this sense we are saying that utility is a relative concept right and finally coming on to the fourth property as you can see we are telling that utility is different from usefulness so it is not that the commodity that is useful for us that is going to increase our welfare that only give us a sense of satisfaction or that only uh, give us uh, utility so sometimes we find that there are some commodities from which our welfare is not going to increase definitely the welfare of the people is not going to increase but still people get some sense of satisfaction and hence they consume that commodity the best example of that is cigarette or alcohols so cigarette and alcohols do not provide us uh, any welfare so that is not good for our body but still the people consume it because that provides some sense of satisfaction to the uh, people and this is the reason that why we are saying that utility is different from usefulness so whether a commodity is useful or not that is uh, null and void when we are talking about utility so utility has nothing to do with the usefulness of the commodity so that uh, shows uh, that is the fourth important feature that we are talking about utility i hope you have uh, understood the four uh, four important uh, features of utility right so we will go further into the topic and uh, we will see that uh, what we can find here as you can see here I have used a table as as well as a graph to make you understand the total utility concept i earlier also i uh, have explained you what is total utility but again you can see the point we will have a, a small discussion on these point you can see here that total utility is the addition of the utility that we are getting from the consumption of a different quantity of a commodity and uh, as you can see here this is the graph of total utility so the graph of tu curve look like this where we see that the total utility keep on increasing so what we are doing we are here in this horizontal axis we are measuring the consumption so we are measuring the consumption of the commodity and here in the vertical axis i am measuring the total utility so this is a graph of tu and it has got two important points to note the first point to note down is that the graph is continuously rising see this is an upward rising graph 
it reaches the maximum and after reaching the maximum it is falling also and the second important uh, point that we are going to notice uh, that we notice here is that this graph is not a straight line like this instead this is a concave in nature so if you look into the nature of the graph then you are going to find that this is concave and at the same time this is rising so there are two points that i want to bring into your notice first the rising part and the concave part now the question is what does uh, rising part represent so the rising part represent that when i am going to increase the consumption of the commodity then at that time the total utility will also increase so that shows that it is rising rising means what so when i was consuming one unit of the commodity then i was getting a total utility of five so when i increase the consumption to two then my total utility also increases to 8. When I further increase to 3, total utility increases to 10. So therefore, this rising part shows that if you increase the consumption of the commodity, the total utility will also increase. But the question is, then what, what is concavity implies here? As I was telling that this graph is concave in nature. So concave implies that Yes, of course, total utility will keep on increasing when the consumption of the good will increase. But what will be the nature of increase? What do I mean? Nature of increase means for every extra unit of consumption, how much there is an increase. So if you look here, then we can find out the meaning of the word concave. So you see, from the first I was getting 5 and then I got 8. So what is the change? How much is the change? So uh, we will do 8 minus 5. So if you do 8 minus 5, 6, 7, 8. So there is a change of 3 unit. When again I increase the consumption from 2 to 3, now I am getting 10. So the total satisfaction is 10. So what is the change now? So the change is only 2. And then further when I increase, I got from 10 to 11. So what is the change? 1. So please children, notice what I am trying to uh, show here. So what I am trying to say, for every extra 1 unit of consumption, I can see earlier there was a change. Means here it is changing by 3 units. So there is a change in the total utility by 3. Now it is 2 and now it is 1. So as if you can see this change, nature of change, then you are, you are going to find that the change is decreasing in nature. When I am increasing the consumption of the commodity, it is continuously decreasing. That means, see, this. look at this table. So if you look at this table, so when the consumption of the commodity is increased, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that, uh, that is the change because change is nothing but what we called marginal utility. So earlier it was 10, 7, 4, 1, 0. So it is now continuously falling. So as you can see here, for the fourth commodity, we were getting a utility of 11. And for the fifth commodity, again the 11. So 11 minus 11 is how much that is the change is zero so that is why we are representing here zero so this concave nature of total utility graph implies that as we are going to increase the consumption of the commodity the change will continuously fall so my willingness to pay for the commodity is continuously going to fall that is what actually the concavity implies here so if my desire for hungerness is satisfied then for the next plate of food, I may not be willing to give that much of money which I was uh, willing to give for the first plate of food because that time I was very hungry and now my hungerness is satisfied. So I will be willing to pay less willing to pay. So that shows the concave nature of the total utility graph. Okay, let us go for the next concept. As you can see here, the next concept we have here marginal utility. So this is again a very simple concept as I was telling you that marginal utility is nothing but it shows change in consumption and just now we have seen that marginal utility continuously fall see the marginal utility is continuously falling when we are increasing the quantity of consumption so that is what represent here by this graph so if you look into the graph of marginal utility then with increase in consumption see the horizontal axis so when i'm increasing the consumption the marginal utility i'm talking about marginal i'm not talking about total utility the marginal utility is continuously falling coming to zero and then going for a negative also so that is what the nature of the marginal utility graph you can see here that is the economic implication of zero marginal utility imply that consumer have all that he wanted of that commodity so zero marginal utility imply that i got the maximum satisfaction so the amount of amount or the quantity of good that i wanted i possess 
now if i uh, consume more of it my utility is going to fall so that is what actually the negative negative part of the marginal utility imply so this graph explain that if the consumer keep on consuming the quantity and uh, the quantity of that commodity then the marginal utility of that commodity is continuously going to fall marginal utility in the sense my willingness to pay for the commodity will continuously fall and that is what happened in the real life so we are never ready to pay uh, more and more if we can continue consuming any commodity so that is what actually marginal utility and as you can see here this is the small table that again shows the falling uh, nature of the marginal utility graph right so this is the marginal utility graph and this is my total utility graph okay so the we may also uh, interested this is a very important question that uh, we normally see in uh, section b of your uh, question paper where it is uh, the question is like this that what is the relation or discuss the relation between total utility and marginal utility so you can see here from the diagram the relation is being explained so the relation is like this that when the total utility is rising see when the total utility is rising but as i told that total utility is concave in nature and what does concavity imply concavity imply that uh, for every extra unit of uh, quantity consumption the change is falling so change is nothing but that is called marginal utility so when total utility is continuously rising up to this part we find the marginal utility is falling and i and i told that when total utility is maximum do you remember that 11th for the fourth and the fifth unit so i will show you the uh, this figure right so see for the fourth the total utility was 11 and for the fifth unit the total utility is 11 so what is the change zero so that is what this zero represent here so in simple term if i say the relation uh, when the total utility is maximum that is the point where the marginal utility is zero and after that when total utility is falling then that we see the marginal utility becomes negative so that is the relation so how we define the relation we define the relation like this that when total utility is rising marginal utility fall but remain positive because it is falling but still it is positive in nature when total utility is maximum marginal utility is zero and when total utility is uh, falling marginal utility become negative so that is how we define the relation between total utility and marginal utility and this is the point that you can see in the video that is the first a relation that is total utility curve is upward rising and concave so what we see as utility curve marginal utility fall continuously but remain positive second when total utility is maximum marginal utility is zero and third when total utility is falling marginal utility is negative so that is the three point that explain the relation between total utility and a marginal utility i hope you have seen this right so uh, this is what actually this falling part of marginal utility has been given a special name and we say that uh, is called law of diminishing marginal utility as i was telling you that ma uh, marginal utility continuously fall when you increase the quantity of the consumption this falling nature of the marginal utility has got a special place in economics and that is called law of diminishing marginal utility diminishing diminishing means what falling so that is what it's not a very high uh, high concept or very big concept it's simply that uh, that nature of the graph has given a name called law of diminishing marginal utility and you can see See here this law was first given by economist Gosen and then it was systematically formulated by Alfred Marshall and what does the law state the law states like this see as the amount consume of a commodity increases the utility derived from the cons consumer from the additional utility that is the marginal utility goes on decreasing so this is what i was telling again and again so as you can see here so as i am increasing the quantity of the consumption marginal utility is falling this nature is nothing but has got a name called law of diminishing marginal utility uh, but this law exist or i may say the law is valid only when some assumption is being followed if there is change in any one of these assumptions, as you can see on the screen assumptions of law of diminishing marginal utility so if any one of this assumption change you will find the law does not prevail the marginal utility utility may not be a downward sloping it may rise also so that is the reason we say that under these condition under these assumptions or assumptions the law of diminishing marginal utility is valid so let us uh, uh, see what are the assumption the assumption is the commodity consumption must be identical in shape size color quantity etc so that means what so when you when we are talking about marginal utility the quantity consumption should 
should be very similar it's not that one cup of tea and the another cup of tea is uh, different that is smaller in size no uh, so when i am continuously consuming the commodity all all the commodity are of uh, identical is shape in uh, same, same in color shape size everything should be identical so and that is that is where the law is going to exist otherwise the law is going to fail uh, the good must be of standard quality it should not be like uh, uh, too small or too large means it is say suppose a cup of tea glass or whatever so these are small assumption that you have to remember i'm not going in a detail regarding these assumption there should not be change in test of the consumer of course that is a, another important uh, assumption so if i if i am consuming say suppose uh, coffee so it should not be that in between i should consume tea so there should not be any change in the test and preference when we are talking about the law of diminishing marginal utility consumption must be continuous there should not be any breakage in the consumption right uh, i'll i'll take a f uh, just a few second to explain you this so you can see here it is told that if a person consumes second unit of a good after certain some time so if there is a gap if there is a gap between uh, say suppose if a person is uh, take, uh, consuming tea and there is a gap early morning he took then again the second cup of uh, tea he took and after that he took the tea uh, in the evening so there is a large gap so for the uh, for that cup of tea in the evening he may be willing to pay even more so that is what actually the point is that consumption must be continuous in nature and the consumer should be rational rational means he should be very optimistic uh, while deciding the uh, consumption level so that is what uh, these are nothing but these are some assumptions uh, under these assumptions we are going to discuss these assumptions uh, further into this topic so these are the assumptions that are compulsory for the law of diminishing marginal utility to operate hope you are, uh, hope you are going to see this video and you are going to like it uh, when we will continue with the next video we will go for some more concept in this chapter still there are some uh, concept that we are left in the cardinal approach I'm, we are going to discuss about uh, one commodity case that when consumer can reach equilibrium if he is consuming only one commodity and uh, these are some slides that I'm going to show uh, then we are going to discuss about uh, when the consumer can reach equilibrium if there is there is two commodity and uh, we are going to discuss it also with the help of this and then we are finally going to start with the ordinal approach right so thank you very much I hope you are going to see this so first you go through these uh, concept and then we will start from here so thank you very much.